Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Derek and I teach Python programming tutorials in a simple way. In this one, I wanted to kick off a mini series on how we can automate common work tasks using Python. Since so many people are starting to work remotely, I wanted to focus on those use cases. However, if you're still working in the office, I believe you can use these too. If you're watching this in the future, the full playlist will be linked in the description. If you're watching this at the time it comes out, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss one. With all of that said, let's dig into how we can start managing files using Python. Starting out, let's check out a directory that we'll be working with. So I have a directory that has some text files in the root level, and then it has a subdirectory of employee receipts with receipts as text files. We also have an empty process receipts file. So let's say that we have a use case of where we wanted to go through a subdirectory, grab all the file names, and then return it. To do that, we can say import OS, which will give us access to a list directory method that we can use. To use that method, we need to define the directory that we want to go through. That means that we need to define the path. So let's create a variable called data location, and this will be the relative path to your directory that you want to go through. In my example, this Python script is on my desktop, and this docs folder is on my desktop. So the relative location for this will be docs, the name of that subdirectory, so employee receipts, and then we can pass this to the list directory method. When we pass that to the list directory method, we want to go through each file that it finds. Then let's aggregate those into a list. To create that list, we'll say something like file list, declare an empty list, and then we'll say for file in OS, we'll use that method list directory, and then we'll pass in that file path. So data location. This is a for loop, so we'll put a colon, and then we'll drop down and end in over. To append each of those files to that file list, we can just say something like file list, use a list method called append, and then we'll append each of these files to that list. Once we have that, we can drop down and exit out of our for loop and say something like print file list. Once you have that, open up a command prompt or a terminal, and let's check that it's working. So we'll execute our code. Mine is a long title, remote worker automation files.py. And once I execute, I get all those file names back in a list. I know it doesn't look like much in this example because we only have so many files, but you could have hundreds or thousands in that directory and you want to grab all the file names. This is a great way to do that. Once you have these in a file list though, let's say you wanted to do more. Let's say that you wanted to create a list of all these expenses and then pass it on to like an Excel or a CSV file. We can do that using pandas. So we'll get rid of that statement. And to use pandas, we'll have to import pandas as PD and make sure that you have this installed. To install this, you would type in pip install pandas and also any dependencies that it has. I believe you would also need to install XLRD, but I already have those, so I won't execute those, and I can just start using pandas. To create a file with that stored information using pandas, we first need to create something called a data frame. This is just an easy way to store tabular data, and then we can write that very easily to Excel. One quick way to do this is using a Python dictionary. So we'll say data is equal to that Python dictionary, where the key will be the column headings. So let's say file names. And the values will be the values in the column of our eventual Excel or CSV sheet. So we'll say file list. Once we have this Python dictionary, we can pass it to a data frame very easily. So we'll say file df will be equal to the pandas method of data frame. The input for this will just be data. If you wanted to pull other information from your files and add it to this Excel sheet, you could. You would just add another key and another list of values after these. We only have one, so I'll just leave it as is. And now let's write this. To write this as an Excel file, we need to define the path that we want to write it to. So we'll say something like new file directory and let's say, instead of putting it back into employee receipts, that we want to move this new Excel sheet to this processed receipts subdirectory. 
So we'll say docs and then processed receipts. Once we have that directory, we just need to reference that data frame that we created. So file df, we need to use a method on it called to Excel. And what we need to pass to this to Excel method is where we want to write this file. We already have the directory that we want to put it in. So we can pass that to file directory. And now we need the name of this file. So we're creating a long string here through concatenations and we need to name it what we want. So let's say receipts sum and let's say that we wanted to do something fancy like add on the dates onto each of these that we wrote. We could use date time from Python to do that. So from date time we'll import date and to return today's date in Python we could just say today is equal to date today. So this is just using the method of today from the date package. We can add that to our string that we're creating by saying string. So we're casting the string type onto what we put inside of this, which will be today from this line right here. And now finally, since we're writing an Excel file, we need an Excel extension. So this looks like a lot in one method, but all we're doing is saying where we want to write this new Excel sheet to. And we're just using a dynamic naming system by adding string of today. That way, whenever we run this again on the following day, it won't delete the previous one. Because if these have the same name, then you'll override the last one. Once we execute this, we see that we have that new Excel document that should have all those names of these documents written to that new folder in processed receipts. So in two quick steps, we know how to read through all the files of a directory and then how to write a new file to a directory. Now let's see how we can move one file from one place to the next. Let's say that once we've done the processing on these receipts and added them to this new Excel document that we no longer wanted them to be in this employee's receipts. Instead, let's move them to the process receipts. To do that, we could say for file in os.list directory, the same way that we did before, pass in that data location, and now we can move them. To move files, what we do is rename them. So we can say os.rename. In this example, we need to use the relative path here as well. So all of these will be in data location and then plus the file name. So they're all gonna be in docs, employees receipts. So docs, employees receipts, and then we need to move them to docs process receipts, which we've already declared right here. So we'll say new file directory, and then we need the file name. We're grabbing the file name here and just adding it on to each of these directories. We'll save that and execute our Python script again. Once it executes, we see that we've moved all those files that were in employee receipts to process receipts. Now that we know how to move files, let's see how we can go through and search each file for a certain string that we're looking for. So let's say that we wanted to find a certain document that contained my name inside of it, so we knew which receipt was mine. We can do that by dropping down, and we'll say something like the string to find, so the string we're looking for is my name. Then, then let's declare the directory that we want to search. So we'll say directory to search and since all of our documents are now in this process receipts we'll be looking in docs and then processed receipts once we find the documents that contain my name we want to add them to a list just like how we did up here so let's say Derek docs will be equal to an empty list we'll use OS again so for file in os.list directory, and we'll pass in that directory to search. At this point, we need to open up each of these files, that way Python can read it. So we'll say with open, we'll say directory to search, plus the file name as f. So we're just going through this directory 
and opening these files and creating them as an object called f. Now we can go through and say if string defined is in f, and then we'll use a method called read. So this is just an if statement. So if this is true, our list, so Derek docs, docs, and then we'll append the file, and then we'll append the file that returns true because it found this string. We'll exit out of our loop, and we can say print, and then Derek docs. Once we run that, we see that my name was found in this receipt. So dinner 71420.txt. If we were to open that up, we see that my name is right there at the top. I hope this shows you the basics on how you can get started using Python to do your automated file managing on your own system. Of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg and there's plenty more that you can do with it. And the idea here is that you take these building blocks and build far more complex functions that you can run on your own system. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let me know and I'll try my best to help. Until next time.